Today on the podcast, I want to talk about what feels today like an underdog AI company, but has been fairly serious, and that is Mistral AI. I was pretty excited to hear recently that they are apparently on the verge of raising about a billion dollars, which is exciting considering I haven't seen a ton out of Mistral AI. It's kind of one of those companies that's based in Paris, France. It was it was the biggest European company. They actually got a whole bunch of special sort of favors because the European Union and France wanted them to kind of be a good competitor to ChatGPT and OpenAI and these American companies. So they got a bunch of special deals where they were able to essentially use European compute uh, training data centers and essentially got a bunch of favors and credits to, to build this really powerful model. Now, of course, it's a very talented team and they were able to do some interesting things, but I still felt like even with all of that, They've been falling quite a bit behind in the recent months and really in the last year, I feel like. So this new billion dollars should be quite impressive. It's interesting where it's coming from, why they're getting the money. I wanted to do a whole episode talking about the state of Mistral AI today, where they're at and what they're capable of doing. And um, one thing that I did wanted to mention as well is if you want to actually go and try Mistral AI, you can do that on the AI Box website. So my own platform, I have AI Box dot ai and there's a playground where you can test out all of the different ai models so one of those ai models that we have on here is mistral something that you'll notice about mistral is and i'm sharing my screen if you're watching on youtube or spotify otherwise i'll, I'll explain but essentially with mistral they have a handful of different models so pixel large vision is kind of their best model um, it's able to see images and understand so you can actually upload files they have mistral small mistral large they have an edge version. So like this is a very small model that you typically put on like an edge device. So like some sort of internet of things, some sort of device that doesn't necessarily need to be connected to the internet. What's cool about Mistral is when they first launched, they were really focused on open source. So a lot of their models, um, they don't, you know, you don't necessarily need to have API access to their platform. Although we have a partnership with Mistral to be able to bring them on to AI box, but like, and so other developers as well, you know, when I, when I'm sitting here talking about what we are doing with them and, and with AI box, like you can imagine that other developers are using this as well. So you can imagine this is also getting implemented into other things. Um, they, what's cool about them is they have a bunch of these kind of open source models that they just released for free. So anyone could use them. Uh, sometimes we access them directly through Mistral and sometimes we access them through a third party that took this open source model is hosting it somewhere. Maybe they have a really cheap compute and so you get a better deal. Typically you get the best deal if you work directly with the company, but uh, this, is a, this is a really interesting thing. And you can also run these sort of like, for example, Mistral B Edge that we have. You could run it on a local device, like on your computer. You could run this without having to get access to even the internet. So this is kind of what was exciting about Mistral was kind of this open source angle. Now, we saw other people do this at the beginning as well. We saw Meta doing this. OpenAI even was kind of their original mission before they switched. And it felt like they were, that Mistral was, it got a lot of recognition and a lot of people kind of loved them because of this. And then just like everybody else, Mistral is now, if you want their latest models, like if you want this this Pixel large vision, you have to get it directly from them. So you can access it over on their website, which is mistral.ai. I went on there and was messaging them and I asked them, you know, some sort of geography question. And what really kind of struck me is if you ask them a question, it looks very similar to ChatGPT. The design is almost the same as it feels like all the AI models. Um, and I'm not even going to lie, even like AI box that I'm creating a very similar design as everyone else. So I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, begging on everyone. I'm just saying it, it looks very similar. One thing I will say that it has is um, this thing called flash answer. So it's essentially showing that it's a, like this answer in particular was a very quick answer. You could see kind of more well thought out answers. They have just like Grok, they have like a think button where they'll actually get it to think longer and give it more compute. So it has a more well thought out question or a response. And this is essentially what OpenAI pioneered. I think this concept when OpenAI said, if we tell the AI model to think longer, we give it more compute, uh, the answers are like way better on the benchmarks. And so when they released this, a lot of other people, Mistral, Grok, and a lot of other players sort of implemented these UI features, like this think button where it's like, you're telling it this question is important, really think about it. And I don't even see this from OpenAI as much. You just, on OpenAI, you just try to switch the model and pick which one you think can answer the, the question best. I like this think button though. So I think Pixel, or sorry, um, Mistral and Grok 
from XAI doing this. I think this is a great UI move. I personally use this think button on Grok a lot when I'm asking it questions. So yeah, I think overall that that was a good play. Um, in any case, great tool. If you want to check it out, uh, there's a bunch of places that you can do that. So why are they getting a billion dollars? Stroll is actually getting this in equity. So this is uh, you know not some sort of debt deal. We recently saw Elon Musk do something similar, which I'll bring up in a second. But they're getting this from Abu Dhabi's MGX fund. Now this is a very reputable fund. I've spoken with some folks here. I had a meeting in San Francisco with someone from MGX Fund uh, in the past about AI Box. And Bloomberg's reporting on this, but essentially this billion dollar deal is sort of interesting because Mistral's also talking to some people from inside of France. There's a lender called BPI France, and they're also talking with them about uh, you know hundreds of millions of euros in debt that they can raise. But this is a completely different deal. This billion dollars would be equity. So when you have these startups doing the debt versus the equity, the debt obviously has to get paid back. They're making payments on it and equity. They're able to, it's a lot cleaner. They just pay, the, you know, they give over equity. And unless there's some sort of special arrangement, they're able to just take that money and run with it. They don't have to make payments on it. So I think when you see companies doing like a lot of debt things, typically that means that they might be a little bit more desperate. Sometimes that means they have just a more established business and they're able to, you know, show because debt, you also have to show like you can repay that debt, you have revenue, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't necessarily think it's a huge red flag if they're looking to raise hundreds of millions of dollars, especially if they're going to be able to raise a billion dollars uh, in equity. But when you see companies only doing debt, it sometimes it can be sketchy. So Mistral's chat by the way like their chat gpt competitor it's called le chat you know it's french so we gotta add a le at the beginning of it and they would love you to believe that it's one of the most significant players in the world i think in europe it's a lot bigger of a deal probably in in the u.s but i still think even in europe chat gpt is kind of smoking everybody there i think their market share is very very small as far as actual use case goes but when you do kind of have these localized models they do get a lot of support from their local governments and uh, jurisdictions. And so I kind of mentioned this at the beginning of the episode, but when Mistral first came out, they were actually put on like a special list where they got to use a whole bunch of resources and infrastructure from the government. They were given essentially data centers and, um, you know, a whole bunch of GPUs to train their model off of. And I believe it was to the tune of like hundreds of millions of euros worth of compute that they were able to access that they couldn't have afforded, but Europe and France wanted specifically to build a winner. I've heard a lot of people kind of compare it in a funny way to like China, how China will oftentimes try to pick tech winners in their country to compete. China obviously gets very heavily criticized when you talk about like deep sea, probably because of censorship and whatnot. But um, when France does it, it seems less, I don't know. I, every, I'm sure every country that wants to be sort of nationalistic or, or have a, a winner and compete on a global scale when they're not would probably do something similar. In America, it hasn't been a necessity because organically we have kind of Chad GPT and a lot of these other players coming out. But in any case, they received a bunch of funds to be able to essentially do that. Total, they've raised $1.9 billion. It's almost $1.2 billion. They have a $6.5 billion valuation. This is all according to PitchBook. And they lasted a fundraise series in June of last year. So it's been over a year. They've not raised any more money since their Series B. Typically, for this specific industry, with like if you're building an LLM, I would say this isn't indicative of this company being incredibly hot. I feel like we're seeing other AI companies raise a lot faster when they're actually like the frontier models, like ChatGPT, Anthropic, even. XAI, all of those are raising and Meta is putting in a lot of money and Google is putting in a lot of money. So all of these companies are spending a lot and raising a lot. And I feel like Mistral has been a little bit left behind. So hopefully this is kind of a turnaround point for them. It's over a year later, if they can actually raise another billion dollars, they've previously raised a billion, if they could raise another billion, maybe get a little bit of, you know, debt. I think that this could help spur their growth. So what's interesting is MGX, who is in talks apparently to give them this, this money, is a $100 billion AI fund. And of course, it's you know backed by the Abu Dhabi government. Um, so apparently NVIDIA is also looking at putting this in, and they're hoping to build Europe's largest AI data center campus. So 
What's interesting is the UAE, who kind of has this fund, they have promised to spend about 50 billion euros on AI projects inside of France. So this is part of a deal they made with the French president, Emmanuel Macron. Uh, he's trying to do this whole AI sovereignty thing there. And to be honest, I will give him, like, I'll give him some, a lot of props for really pushing entrepreneurial efforts and AI specifically in France. A lot of people criticize him, I think, for arresting the CEO of Telegram and essentially like holding him in country arrest. He's not allowed to leave the country for a lot of what would appear to be sort of like dubious claims. He hasn't been convicted of anything. They're just like building a case against him. And so he's been stuck in France for the last year. I remember when the, the news broke, I was spending two months in France last year. I've previously lived there for uh, a couple of years. And so I love France, but that kind of shocked me. So in any case, he gets a lot of criticism for that, but I think he's still also trying to push forward tech companies inside of there. And some people would argue that it's counterintuitive to essentially like imprison sort of or hold hostage inside your country, the CEO of one of the biggest tech companies, not let them leave while you're building a case against them at the same time as telling everyone to all the other tech companies to come and build stuff there. So anyways, that's just like political drama, I guess, inside of France. But they are really trying to push forward, right? They have this $50 billion that the UAE has committed to spend there. And so evidently, Mistral, one of the biggest AI companies inside of Europe, is going to be one of these companies that's taking a bunch of that money. So this probably seems like a no-brainer investment for them inside of, inside of the company. So I wanted to talk a little bit about where Mistral is today, what they do. If you're not super familiar, if you haven't specifically tried out uh, Mistral before, I think it's a, I think it's a very interesting company competes with chat GPT, but they're trying to do a couple things on their own. So if you go to their website, the, the, the four main things they say is that they do, they let you make your AI your own. You can train it, you can distill it, you can fine tune and build with open source models. So they're really focusing on like, I think developers isn't like everyday people are going to be doing this, but developers can use their open source models, can fine tune them and can do a lot of interesting things there. They have a big focus on agents, like I think everyone talks about, but they say deploy agents that execute, adapt and deliver real results with powerful orchestration, tooling and safety. Really, they're just saying they have an API and you can you can build them into you can use them and plug them into software kind of like I plugged them into AI box so that you can use them. You can also use them on, you know, automated quote unquote agents or just automated tasks that you might build. One thing that is interesting that they do focus on is kind of this privacy angle. So because they have the open source model, they can be built like they can be running on a device locally without connection to the internet. They, they kind of focus on this. They say deploy and build with AI anywhere on premises, cloud edge device and more while retaining full control of your data. You don't have to send your data to their servers necessarily to use a Mistral model because of their open source. And so I think a lot of people like the privacy angle of that. People love the concept of what Apple was doing with Apple intelligence, even though they've completely dropped the ball on that and are delaying it uh, to infinity and beyond. But they love the concept that you could run an AI model locally on, for example, your iPhone without having to send anything to the internet. And so this is kind of the same appeal of Mistral and what they're doing with their open source models. So all in all, I think they have a lot of good they have a lot of good features that people are interested in. I do think they need more money in order to adequately execute. I talk to almost zero people ever who, when I say like, what AI model do you, they use? They're like, oh yeah, like LeChat is like my number one AI model I use. Like, and maybe it's because I'm in America, but that's just not something I ever hear. I think they've made a lot of their money making direct partnerships with companies, specifically companies in Europe who will you know, use them if they're just as good as any other model, why not pick a European one? And so that's where like, I feel like they're kind of at today. I hope they're, they're able to raise this uh, next round of funding as I think this will help push them ahead a lot. It's an interesting product. It's a great platform. They have a couple other uh, products and platforms that they've built out as well to help make their offering a little bit more unique and interesting. But overall, the core functionality is a chat GPT competitor who I feel like is a couple versions behind chat GPT. So hopefully they're able to raise this money and catch up. They don't have anything crazy with video or image or audio. They're just doing the text. And so I would really hope that with a billion dollars, they'll be able to kind of get to the front, the cutting front, front of the line here. We're seeing companies like Google, right? They released their latest model. They jumpstart everybody on the, on the um, LLM arena, on the 
kind of on the leaderboards and stuff and, and they get to the front grok was consistently doing that when they released grok 3 and we'll see what happens with grok 4 but uh it feels like whenever these big companies release a model, they become number one. And Mistral hasn't really had that moment where they've ever been number one and beaten out OpenAI or anyone else. And so hopefully this money is able to help them do that. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast, listening to the state of Mistral today. Make sure to go check it out on AI Box if you haven't already tried Mistral. I think it's a pretty uh, interesting tool and it does have some interesting use cases, especially when you think about some of the things it's able to do on its edge computing models and hopefully some of its more advanced models in the future. Make sure to leave a rating and review wherever you get your podcasts, and I will catch you in the next episode.